Oh my gosh, I'm so happy this is finally happening. I kept kind of wondering, like, when when are we going to get to do this interview? What's going to happen? I know you've been pretty like selective about where you wanted to hop on and who you wanted to talk to um, since parting ways with WWE. But how have you been, dude? What's going on? Sure, I've been I've been great, honestly. I I feel exactly how I thought I was going to feel after leaving, asking for my departure. And honestly, and you know this, like when you have family, you got somebody to go home to, you got those little ones that like, it just, you wrestling just looks different now for me. So uh, I love it. I love my life right now. It really is crazy how that happens when like that switch sort of happens and people warn you about, not warn you, but like people tell you like when you have kids and you've got your family, like everything changes, your priorities change. Um, where things kind of rank in your head completely change. It's it's really incredible to be able to have. I, I like- was scared to have kids though, Renee. I'm not going to lie. I was, really? I was that kind of guy that I was like, I'm not going to have no kids. I see my life going one way uh, and then college happened. And literally on graduation, you get the news like, hey, you're about to be a father. And then like all of a sudden oh you're like, gosh. holy crap, how do I... Cause I didn't have a father growing up, you know, I had a stepfather, but it was, it, there was a total disconnect, you know, once you realize that he's not your real dad. And then, uh, so like for me, all of those lessons that I learned from him, like completely went out the door. I was like, I felt so lied to, you know, from my, from my family. So like all of those lessons of being a father, I never had, didn't know how to be an adult, never knew how to buy a suit until, you know, my my entry to WWE was my first time. Like even as a teacher, I never had a suit. Like I I, I struggled just like everybody else, you know. But at the end of the day, I made it work. I always made it work. I had to make it work. Okay, uh, yeah, and I mean that. I mean that just kind of I think goes hand in hand with like your work ethic. You know, like we hop on here. And it's like you're not half-assing anything. You find a way to figure things out. What was so sorry? You were saying that um. You, you found out that your stepdad was, was not your dad. What yeah. was that? What, what went into that? How old? Oh, were I, I think, okay. So like a lot of people have to understand like my childhood, I grew up in Camden, New Jersey, which yeah, was let's like things way back because yeah. here's the th- I feel like nobody knows anything about you. They just know Lindsay. They don't know anything about the guy underneath the mask and any interview. That's why I've been so selective. Any interview I've ever at or have asked to been on, they ask you the general wrestling questions and, that doesn't interest me, you know, ask me about me, ask me what my interest, a lot of people, even in WWE didn't know I can speak English. Yeah. You know, so how crazy is that? That, Like the people in WWE day one that you couldn't speak English. day one. Oh my God. Day one. I remember, actually, I remember we debuted in Memphis and then like the next week we were going to Canada and somebody, I'm not going to say who it was, but he was like, Hey brother, you got your green card. And I'm like, (laughs) I'm from New Jersey, bro. I'm from New Jersey. Like, I, I'm born and raised American. I'm just Puerto Rican in America. Like, yeah. I, I, it was a bad disconnect. It was so funny, though. It's funny how, like, um, I was actually just watching um, some of the shop that Le- LeBron James does on HBO, and he was talking to um, a basketball player. I can't remember whose name. I was, like, I was half watching it and half watching the baby, but he was saying the same thing where, like, so many people thought that he was, like, from uh, – from Africa, couldn't mm-hmm. speak English, that he would he would literally joke with people and go, don't speak English. And then like people bought into it. Like that's people just don't put two and two together or like ask questions or like care to like take that deep dive on who people really are. That's now, don't get I- me wrong. I definitely will pull that. Uh, I don't speak English card if I'm not trying to. <laughs> or a bill or something. I'll definitely <laughs> say, you know, no hablo in inglés, bro. Let's go. <laughs> But yeah, mo- it's, you it's, do. It, it was frustrating. Like, uh, you know, people like not understanding who I was. A lot of people not understanding that I could speak English, let alone was a math teacher, mm-hmm. a parent of four. You know, like I, there was a lot of things about me that I wish was out there. And I thought like if it got out there, then maybe, believe it or not, it was a lot of, I don't know how you and John feel about it, but I, I felt at first putting my family out there was like, I didn't want that information out there. I didn't want, and it wasn't because I was hiding anything. It was just more like, I wanted that disconnect from wrestling. So like, I never posted about them on my social media until recently. And uh, over the last like two years in WWE, but like now I came to that realization that everything I do is for my family. And uh, 
like you said, like once you can become an adult and you have that responsibility, like your wrestling passion now becomes not a job, but like you have to make this work now, you know, that's yeah, a means of providing everybody. And it's a difference. Like when you are successful in professional wrestling, I mean, it's such a difference in like what your lifestyle is that you're going to be able to provide to your family, but it's also incredibly time consuming it's mm. so difficult on your body there. I mean, there's so many different factors that kind of weigh into it that really make you take a step back and go like, okay, like, is my time away right now worth it? But I'm making this money that will be great for my family for later. It can really put you in like a weird spot while also still, you know, being a human being trying to achieve your own dreams as well. Yeah. I mean, those yeah. all factor in together. Um, do you feel like a lot of the guys that were brought in through the cruiserweight championship or through the cruiserweight tournament into two Oh five live. Do you feel like a lot of those guys felt that same way as you did? If people like people just not knowing who you guys all were like truly. Honestly, no. And I'm going to say no, because you could look at them and there was no language barrier. Like you could look at them and be like, Oh, they, they could speak English or they could speak English. So like right off the bat, people felt comfortable talking to them, you know, I think that th th what the problem with the cruiserweights at that time, we were just very scared. We didn't know anything, you know, where I still felt when I left that I, the same way I felt going into WWE, like, like I was from the Indies, like I, right. you know, my mindset, like I didn't live extravagant or anything. I lived, you know, I got my bare minimum and start paying that off right away. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the guys, like we just didn't know who to talk to. We didn't know how it worked. We still had that mindset. Like we were on the Indies. And I think that's why, like, once they got let go, it was an easy transition back. Like, right. and it wasn't, and I try to have this conversation with somebody else. I said, it wasn't like they were bad wrestlers. I think some of them were just bad businessmen. Like they were just stuck being the wrestler rather than like the businessmen. And for me, I thought that's what helped me out. Learning English, having, like, I knew like there was something special about us. So like now I put that wrestling aside and I was like, let, let us be businessmen so we can get as much money and provide for our family. And that was my main concern. Get as much money as fast as I can provide for my family. Cause I don't know how long I will last. You know, I got hurt last week going into the ring, Renee, oh, like did you? What happened? in the ring. Uh, I just stepped in the ring. <laughs> I, oh I literally, I, it was a match on Saturday. I was out first. Uh, the ring was fine. Everything was fine. I just literally was just bloop. It was like the simplest thing. It's always and on was, like this, the stupid shit that you're like, the smallest things. little things. It's like, are you kidding me? Are you okay right now? It's not like any long-term injury or anything. But you know what I was more scared? Of? I was more scared of like calling my girl mm. and like giving her that, like, you know, or your kids could get over it because like, you know, they're like, oh, daddy's hurt again, but you know, I'm going to take care of him. But like your girl's the one that's like, well, how serious is it? Cause she knows I'm either going to downplay it or, mm. you know, just not make it a big deal. Cause I also know my body, but I also know like I need my body to make my money. Yeah, no, I get that for sure. There's times like that with John where like, I'll be watching things and I'm like, Ugh, was this okay? Like, how was this bump? Like, especially when there's like chairs involved. I hate chair bumps. Those stress me out so much. So sometimes he comes home and I'm like, okay, let me get like the full assessment. Cause sometimes on the phone, he's like, easy money, babe. All good. Yeah. All good. Like that's his like go-to line that makes me like more suspicious. I'm like, wait, are you actually okay? I don't no, know. if you're saying easy money, Mox has always been <laughs> smart. Uh, I've like, I know Mox a long time before WWE and he's always been the same dude. Like even when I was in WWE with him, like he was the same dude. I was like, this dude is cool. He knows exactly what he wants. And like, you know, like he gets it. Like he gets who he is. He gets yeah. wrestling. Like I wrestled Mox one time in a four way. It was me, Mox, really? uh, uh, me, Mox, Kyle O'Reilly, and uh, Eric Cannon for Dragon Gate USA. It was an opener, and he, like, we did something, and then like he kind of went crazy. This was like with Super Mox. I loved it, and then uh, <laughs> he he went off to wrestle later on that night. But uh, I've been, I love that dude. That dude is so genuine, like for real, for, and you know how it is in this business oh, to not yeah. have genuine people. So yeah, they can be far and few between sometimes funny. We were talking about you this morning. I was like, what kind of things do you know? Like, what can we talk about? Well, like with Lindsay Dorado and he's like, man, like we go back to like days in Chikara and like yeah. being able to hang, like, just like the time that you guys have been able to spend together. But I mean, that's, that is such a cool thing about wrestling is like the way paths cross and 
Uh, sometimes they overlap and whatnot, but it's like, yeah, it's, it's interesting the way, you know, you kind of see people in so many different promotions and at different points in their career and, and whatever, but yeah, it's, it's pretty neat, but he is a, he's a good, genuine guy. We got a good. How is he as a father? I know he's a great father, but like how, like, I know when people ask me like how I am with a father, like as a father, I, I'm very, and I know he's going to be very protective, but like, I know like the character that they see on TV is nothing like I am in real life. So, of course. I, I, but knowing John and you know, John, like, how is he like, it's cause you have a girl. Funny. Yeah. We have got a little girl. She's just, she's almost Ooh. nine months old and she looks just like him. Like, she oh, does that, does that bother you that she does? Cause my kids look <laughs> like me and my girl hates that. You know what? It's kind of back and forth. So because she's only nine months old, it's like some weeks I'm like, oh, she's starting to look a little bit more like me. And then she'll like revert back to looking like John. So she's kind of flip flopping. But yeah, there are times I'm like, the hell, man, I carried this kid for nine months. Give me a little. That's exactly what she says to me. I'm like, I'm sorry, babe. (laughs) But she loves you still, you know. Yeah, I love my baby. That's such a thing for kids to come out looking like their dads. Like everyone I've talked to, like, yeah, my kid looks just like my husband or the dad or whatever. Like it's such a common thing. But yeah, I mean, John is a dad. It's funny watching him. It's it's always growing and changing, especially now that like we're in such a rhythm with her and she, her little personality is shining. And she's like, she's a very happy, easy baby. Um, but, you know, figuring out like what her cues are going to be like. I For me, I'm like, oh, I know what that cry means. She's hungry. That cry means yeah. she's tired. So me trying to like give like that, like mom and me trying to like pass that off to John sometimes. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he is very like. It's it's funny watching him, I guess, just like learn her and develop that like relationship with her it's like that 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 father daughter relationship i was just about to say that yep it's, it's unlike my, anything else my first two children um were my my girls and like i told oh, you how earlier old are your kids Woo. Okay. I'm about to have a 16 year old. I'll tell you about her in a second. Yeah. Whoa. And I just had some stuff go down in my house right now. I'll tell you off stream with her that you, I hope you never have to encounter. And then I have a, uh, 11 year old. She'll be 12 in October. And then my two boys, I'll have a a nine year old in April and a uh, 12 year old in October. So I got two April birthdays and two October birthdays, but my 16 year old, well, she'll be 16 in April. She, uh, so like I told you earlier, I was graduating. I found out I was having a baby. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was with my girl who I'm with right now. And she had a kid from a, um, you know, prior relationship. God, you guys and at been that, together a long time. Yeah. Like she really has helped me out. Like I, I always told her, I said, I would have made it, but you made it easier for me yeah. to make it. So we made it. Are you and, guys uh, married she, or no? Yes, we just got married. Oh, yeah. congratulations. And I was very scared about that too, you know, not because <laughs> of her, because why. of my family, like just growing up, I never saw a functional relationship, but yeah. she had a, a, um, a child of three years old when I had met her uh, from a previous relationship. And I had fell in love with this little girl. Like we worked at the same cheerleading school or cheerleading gym. That's how I met her. And, um, you know, I saw this little girl like running around and I knew she was, uh, you know, my wife's daughter. And I was so intimidated to talk to her. So I just grabbed a bottle of water and I called the little girl over. I said, Hey, and I poured water on her. I said, tell your mom, I did that. And, uh, her mom came over. She didn't like me at first, but, uh, that's how we, that's how we ended up meeting. But long story short, you know, (laughs) she ended up being my first daughter and, uh, you know, my daughter wasn't even born yet. My biological daughter wasn't even born yet. And she was already calling me dad. Um, so like, you know, me and her have been best friends ever since I love my babies. Like I love, and it's, like I said, she's not my biological daughter, but she's always been my daughter. You know, that's been my culture. Have, you guys have like five kids then coming through the house all the time. Well, four, four, unless you oh, include me is, being the big one. Four. Yeah. Okay. Got yeah. It. She's the fourth I, I, one. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we will include you on that one. I'm sure that your wife would include you on that all the list time. because we all, all, th- all become your mothers. And of course, Insane. I take care of her, you know, when we're on vacation, but she take care of me every other day of the week. So, yeah. but like I said, without her, I would not have really, I would not be able to, I would have been here, like I told her, but it was a lot easier yeah, with her by my side. Of it's, it's, what, what does your wife do? 
Well, she's a stay home. I let her stay home the whole oh, time. Like, nice. Even when I was a teacher, again, I, I just felt I wanted my kids to have love. I didn't have love when I was younger. You know, yeah. I didn't feel loved. So I wanted, you know, all my kids to feel like I, I love the feeling when my kids just walk around my house and say, Daddy, I love you and just oh. walk away. I'm like, yeah. no, come back. Let me get a hug. Let me smell you. Yeah. Right. Something. Let anything. Me smell you. That is such uh, a crazy thing where I'm like, I just want to like, I love the you. smell. And you got one. Just imagine if you have two, Ooh. like they smell different, like, and they, oh you God. know who they smell like you could get their blankets or their shirts. And you're like, oh, I know who, who's oh this. Like, God. and it's not like a bad smell. If you're not a parent, no. like if you don't know what we're talking about, but <laughs> yeah, it's not it's, a bad smell. It's just it's, like this. Oh my God. Her little breath. Oh my God. Oh, everything about her. Everything about, wow. <laughs> I love it. So cute. And it doesn't go away. It really doesn't go away. Yeah. And, and you know what? I feel like that's almost a thing too. It's like that I've noticed like with John and I too, it's like, I mean, you have a baby and it's like, oh my God, this is our baby to take care of for the rest of her life. But that attachment and the way that that feeling just gets stronger and stronger mm -hmm. all the time, especially like you, you, once your relationship starts to like really blossom with this little person, they're dependent on you. Of course, this but little once you person. start having like Ooh. your little things and you know how to make them laugh and you know what the things are that are going to make them happy. Like, Oh, there's just nothing better. It's it's just no, honestly, that 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 is probably one of the best things to ever happen to me. Like, even though I was very scared and petrified when I found out I was going to be a father from, uh -huh. you know, like biological father to another child. Mm -hmm. I was uh, I was so scared, but I felt instantly like I felt really prepared. And I don't know if it's because like the childhood I had or if it was just like, all right, well, man up. Because, you know, the men in your life, honestly, weren't able to man up. So, like, prove them wrong. And I was able to prove everybody wrong in my family. Like, first one to go to college and graduate. You know, first one to, like, say I'm going to do something and didn't change my mind. I, I left Camden for that reason. I didn't want to yeah. stay in that area because I knew I would never be successful, you know? Yeah. I go no, back I, I go back now and there's still people there that I'm like, uh, like, just leave. You'd be so much happier. So much happier. It's, it always kind of, not that it blows my mind. Like, I understand when people want to stay in their hometown or whatever, but I was the same as you. And like, I had nothing like traumatic or anything happened, but I just like, couldn't wait to get out. I wanted to see the world. I wanted to get new experiences. Like I was dying to do that And my brain could never relate to people that didn't have that same itch. To want to yeah. go and do something and like go, uh, just go experience the world through a different. I just want, I always comfort. thought I wanted more. I always thought there was more out there. And like, yeah. um, I, like I wanted to go in the army thinking that that would take me to around the world. But then again, I'm like, if I'm getting shot up in, the, in this place, like, why am I going to go get paid to get shot up over there? Right. And then, right. uh, cause I, again, I had a plan, Renee, I had a plan since day one. Like very early on that I was going to be a professional wrestler. Like I'm talking kindergarten, like oh, that's really? how early on. Oh yeah. And then first grade, I found like, okay, if that doesn't work, uh, I'm going to be a teacher. Cause I had a great teacher in my first grade who like really inspired me. And then I just never changed my mind. I said, I, I could be influenced by everything and anything. And I was just like, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, I know I'm going to be here and I know I'm going to do that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I did it. And that to me, nobody could take that away. And I, it's a great example. Like we're all setting great examples, like being pioneers and great uh, uh, examples of just being successful adults, you know, who like have like love to have fun. I still think I'm 20 years old, you know, when I'm not 20 years old, reminding myself this weekend, I'm not 20 years old that I can't get in the ring without hurting myself. God dang, but it's all right. I'm a, I still killed it though, Renee. I'm not going to lie. I killed it. I didn't even care. I said, ring the bell. If, if you don't ring it, I'm not going to go right now. And he said, all right, I'm going to ring it. But uh, I just, I, I can't half-ass anything. And, and, yeah. and it's because of my kids. I don't want them to see me half-ass anything. I don't want them to think that that's okay. Because I know in life, and you know in life, that shit don't get you nowhere. That don't get you nowhere. Does not get so. you anywhere. Not this day and age. There's no way. There's no such thing as coasting anymore. We don't get to do that. No. Um, okay. I want to run things back with you. You've talked about let's your go. childhood a little bit, but let's get into it because I know you've not really spoken about much of this before. Um, but but what were some of the things? Like, what was your childhood like? What was it like growing up for you? What was your household like and not experiencing yeah. love the way that you say you're trying to to portray in your own home? And uh, let me get let me let me start this off by saying it's no one's fault. It's just the, the cards that was given in life to everybody in my household. So like, I'm not blaming my dad. I'm not blaming my stepdad or my mom. It just was life. Like I just accepted it. 
So um, <clears throat> I could honestly remember, that's probably when I started remembering like life, you know, when I found out that my stepdad wasn't my dad and growing up, his name was Tito. How did Tito. you find I, out? Like what was it? I'll, I'll, I'm about to, yeah, I'm about to hit you with the, the truth right now. All right. So uh, my, my stepdad's name is Tito. I'm still very close with him. He's actually, my kids call him big boss, man, because he's a correctional officer. Oh. And like, yeah, I still, I, that's my, that's my love. Like he's my dad, you know, yeah. but at that time, you know, Tito for me being Spanish registered as pop or like dad or like papi, you know? So anytime I say Tito, I was thinking like dad until I went to school and then realized like, oh yeah, I got a Tito. And they're like, what's the Tito? Like, they're like, oh no, I got it. This is dad. Like, and I was like, oh well, yeah, I got one. His name is Tito. Like we call him Tito. But long story short, I didn't understand that Tito was not dad. Then wow. I get home, I have this conversation with my family and find out that my dad, my real dad is in jail. He's been in jail since I've been one. And like, you know, for at that time, pettiness, drugs, you know, I mean, he was on some stuff, but like at the end of the day, it, he, he did his time. He did his yeah. time. And I guess at that point he was coming out and they, you know, I was old enough to know, Hey, this is not your dad. This is your stepdad. He's just my partner, my husband or my, my boyfriend. And, uh, you know, your dad, he's coming out of jail. And again, there was a disconnect because my grandmom, who I'm also very close to, like, that's my, that's my mom. I call her my mom. Mm -hmm. Um, I would never understood why I thought she was just my mom's mom. But I knew my mom's mom. Like there was like just there was a missing piece information. It was my dad that was the missing piece. Got so, it. but we would go there every weekend. Me and my older sister that shared my dad. Like we would go there every weekend, spend time with my grandma, my grandpa. He wasn't there, obviously. He was in jail. But like that was my time with that side of the family until you know my dad came out. And then I was so confused as a I was a seven year old. I was seven years old. I remember this. Like that was a bad year for me. Like yeah. a lot of things happened that year. You know, for me. And uh, seven years old to find out like, yeah, this dude is not your dad. Your dad's been in jail. The grandmom that you've been going to, that's his mom. And uh, you about to meet your dad for the first time. And Renee, I can honestly tell you, like, from my memory, my personal memory, I could probably count on two hands how many times I actually spent time with my dad. Yeah. But every time I did spend time with him, I felt loved. He never cursed at me. He never, he never like did drugs in front of me. He never, you know, he showed me art. He, he showed me what art is because he would love, he would draw things for us. He would make things when he was in jail for us, like later on in life. Uh, you know, like he, he showed me that passion for art. Like me and my sisters and my brothers love art. Like yeah. they're all great artists. Every one of us is great artists. My daughter's a great artist. Uh, and I feel like that's because of him. Like he passed mm -hmm. that along to us. So, um, you know, like, as years pass on, like that, that relationship kind of gets better. He, but he keeps going in and out of jail. And, uh, finally, I think I was 12 turning 13. Yeah, I was 12 turning 13 and, uh, December, it was like Christmas time was the last time I saw him. I believe it was 2000. Uh, cause he passed or maybe 2000, uh, 2002. Cause I think he passed away 2003. That's how I try to, to like block it out of my head because like, it's not about the, the death is about his legacy. How he impacted me is more important. Um, but anyway, so 2002, that December, we went to uh, New York, me, my sisters, uh, my brother, my grandma, and I was pissed, Renee. I'm not going to lie. I was pissed because this dude, like he showed me love, but then like he lied to me the last time I saw him by saying he'll never go back, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I told him, basically, I was 12 years old. I said, you know, I'm going to give you one more chance. And then after this, you out of my life. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm mad. I'm upset. Like, I want my dad in my life. Yeah, kids you know? can't understand that. Kids don't have a way to process. Like, just stop doing the bad thing so that you're still yeah. going to jail so that we can. I want to see you. I want to have a relationship with you. But kids, yeah. Just stop. And then, um, <clears throat> you know, we left like, like I was angry. So we left like not how I wanted to be, you know. Like, I, I will always want to make sure that me and my girl go to bed. Like, I don't care if we have an argument, babe, I love you. Like, we good. Like, th this ain't nothing. So I wish I had that mindset with my dad. I didn't have that mindset. So we left. And then, um, you know, February comes about two months later. And I have 
was hanging out at my friend Matt's house. I was young. You know, my, my friend at that time was my friend Matt. And I was calling in, checking in my mom. And I said, hey, mom, just checking in. Tell me what time I got to be home. And she's like, you know, come home, dinner time, whatever. By the way, I just want to let you know, your dad called. He was looking for you. And at that time, also my mom and me didn't see eye to eye on what the relationship should have been like for me and my dad. Mm-hmm. You know, she always talked down about him. But again, I... I see by example. So if you treat me good, I think you're a good person. You know, you do whatever you want outside of like out of this conversation or this interaction that's on you. But like when you if you treat me good, then we good, you know. But so I played it off to her. I said, yeah, okay, whatever, mom, don't worry. Uh, All right. I'll see you at dinner time. I hung up the phone fast. And I said, yo, I know he's staying at my grandma's house because that's the only people like, you know, only number I know besides, you know, my mom. But that's, that's the only place I memorize our phone numbers. Right. Yep. Mom, right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, boom, called her quick. And I said, hey, grandma, I'm like, where's pop? My mom stays out. Like, I, I just want to speak to him. And she said, ah, tuto. that's what she calls me. Tuto. She's like, ah, tuto. And, you know, he wanted to see you and Jody, my sister. But, um, you know, he said he couldn't get a hold of y'all. So he's going to surprise y'all tomorrow. He went out with his friends. And I said, all right, that's fine. Um, you know, I'll tell, I'll just call tomorrow or, or I'll tell grandma or mom to pick me up or whatever. Like, I want to see him. Yeah. So then the next day happens and uh, I go to school and I was, a, I was a good student, Renee. I was a good student. Like it, school was easy for me. Math is easy. That's what I went to school, a uh, college for. I went for uh, mathematics just because it was easy. Like I didn't really want to think in school because I was wrestling already. You know, I just wanted to. Nice. You went. To Sorry. Math, you didn't have to think. Damn. Uh, man, my my <laughs> electives were like the easy math classes too. Like I didn't even show up to class. Sorry. So uh, so yeah, uh, I, I was a good student. And I was wrestling too. So I went to wrestling practice. It was like a normal day, business as usual. As like I say in my house, business as usual. And then like I thought. I had like a, an incident with a teacher, but like not to the point where I would get in trouble or anything. So when I got home, my mom was like, yo, we got to talk. And I, I would start, I almost ratted myself out. Like, oh my God, what did I do? Did I, uh, the teacher, ain't, like I was coming up with everything. And then I saw my stepdad crying. I was like, oh, one, I never seen my stepdad cry before. And I was like, okay, men do cry. Men do cry. Number one, number two, why are you crying? And then my mom's like, your dad's dead. I was like, I was like, what? I a hundred percent thought they were joking with me. I was like, I literally thought you told me yesterday, this dude came out of jail. He was wanted to come see me after I talked shit about him, like at the, in December at the jail saying like, if you do this again, like we done. That was my last interaction with him. And you telling me he's dead? Oh, my God. And they're like, yeah, they found him um, slumped over, poisoned. Like, uh, I guess somebody had poisoned him, uh, his drink, and uh, he was slumped over in the toilet. It was like his, his shit all messed up. And that's how they found him. Oh I was like, God. any other way may have been better. But that was the way that you find out as a 12 year old turning 13, because I was how 12 does, still. How do you how does a kid interpret that? Like what went through your brain? <sighs> like, that's really scary. That's so scary. One. OK, so like one, two, you got to also understand, like where I grew up, like I'm not saying that stuff was normal, but like murder, violence, that stuff was normal. But you also don't expect it to be like in your house or your family. Sure. Right. Because like you got people like you know, whether they're in gangs or whatever, like, you know, you're protected, you know, you're good. Right. But then like when it hits home and it's like a hierarchy of your house, maybe not the house, but like the father figure, you know, and it's like the one that you're craving attention for the one that you just like want just, just to like wake up and be like, yo, pop, let me guess, let's go play outside. Like I never had that interaction with my, even my stepdad, I never had that interaction, you know? So I make sure like now that my kids, like I'll go out, I'll, I literally drop everything. I don't care what I'm doing, like making gear or make like making dinner. Yo, you want to go outside? You want my attention? I got you. Yeah. Cause I know I never had that. 
Yeah. And like that stuff sticks with you too. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, but it's like, you know, when you're a kid and you, all you want is your parents' attention. You want your mom's attention. You want your dad's attention. I mean, those are how we learn how to be human beings. So for you to not have those relationships, I mean, that stuff really, it's rough. Yeah. It's, it was, like I said, I don't blame anybody else. Like at at first I had some beef with my mom. I'm not going to lie. Like me and her, like we butt heads, but it's because we the same person. Like we were very stubborn. We're very like, just get it done kind of thing. And, um, you know, it wasn't her fault that I didn't get or feel like I got love from her because yeah, she was a single parent at uh, you know a point in my life. So she had to like hustle. She had to work. She was going to school. You know, she showed me like, yeah. like she struggled and she had three kids, like me, my, my sister and my younger sister from my stepdad. So like, it, it was it was like a hustle, you know, in my house, my stepdad eventually was in the picture and like really worked his ass off. Like, but because of that, there was like no, no vacation. I never had a vacation in my life. I'm about to be 35. I've never taken a vacation in my life. Like, Damn. you know, I don't know what that's like. Yeah. Yeah. And what I do with my, my, my family, like my girl, we go to her, like her family's house and, you know, but that's different. Like I've never been to like, let's go to Cancun. Let's totally disconnect from life yeah. because I feel like I don't have that pleasure. Cause I have to provide, I have You're to in, like, work hustle mode all the time, all yeah. the time. Dude, Even... you gotta take a vacation. You deserve it. Help like, me. How? I don't know how you know to what? just turn off. I would love to tell you too. I've honestly not been on vacation a long time. Either I have been on vacation before, but it has been a long time for us as well. Um, but yeah, you know what? I, it's moms always take the brunt of everything as well. Mm-hmm. She's the constant mom's always there, whether she's busy paying full attention to you or not, she's still always going to be the one that's there. So she, you're going to take out the aggression on her. You're going to have the fights with her, uh, no matter what, no matter what the situation's going to be. It's, I think about that sometimes with my daughter, I'm like, oh my gosh, like she's such a sweet little angel right now. And at some point it's gonna be like, screw you, mom. Like you're the one. Oh, what's going to happen. Renee. Y and Z. Like it's, it's, it's going to happen. Trust and, like, me. Parenting is tough. So what is your relationship like with your mom now having gone through these things and now having your own kids? Have you guys been able to have more of a relationship together or not so much? Not so much. Honestly, no, I no. still, I'm, I'm very, uh, distant from my family and this was before wwe like i was just very distant from my family i just felt different i felt like i was in search for something and uh i just like yeah me and my mom will have like a i'll have this like come to jesus moment when i'm a little bit too lit and i just want to you know reach out to my mom and say like i don't really want to have a conversation but i just want to say i love you and then you know it turns into a conversation and sometimes it's a good one sometimes it's just like ah, i should have just left it at I love you. And that's it. But, um, you know, honestly, believe it or not, my kids don't have a relationship with my mom. They think my grandma is, uh, they know my grandma is my grandma. Uh, and they know who my mom is, but they don't have a relationship with her. They have a, uh, when you say that you're talking about your dad's mom, my dad's mom. Yeah. Because like, you know, like I said, she, my mom raised us, but my grandma raised us like me and my sister, we have a much closer relationship with her. Um, you know, I'll do anything. I'll do anything for my family within reason, but I'll do anything a hundred percent for my grandma without question. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, damn. Yeah. I mean, you know what family dynamics are, they're always kind of all over the place, but as long as there's like some somewhere that, you know, that you can go, that is like a safe place for you to be as a kid. I mean, that's everything. So when you had your own kids, yeah, when you started having your own kids and, and having kids at a young age too, what were some of the things right off the bat that you knew that you wanted to do as a parent? Oh, for sure. I wanted a, a house house. Mm-hmm. I, went, I was like, we got to get a house. Did you guys have I, in apartments and stuff? We did. We, we moved around until uh, we ended up getting a house eventually. Uh, but I remember, again, it just didn't feel like our house. It just felt like they were struggling to keep it at some times. You know, my stepdad still lives in that house, believe it or not. It's, wow. it's kind of good to go back and, and see. But yeah. even now, like, he's still kind of like, you know, you could tell, like, it's just a has- more of a hassle to keep it. It, it. There's no, like, coasting by, like how you say it. Right. Uh, but I said, yeah, I just, I wanted, I wanted a house for sure. I wanted them to have a place to be safe and come home if anything were to happen. And, uh, you know, I wanted to have a car so that way they could get to everywhere. Because as a teacher, when I moved down to Florida in 2010, I didn't get a car to 2016. 
Oh, wow. You know, like I was, I was busting it. I was taking rides. I was hustling to get from, you know, where I was at to my high school where I taught or the college I taught at. Like mm. I was getting it. Like, you know, we were making it work or me and my girl would take the bus or a cab to go uh, food shopping. But again, we had to make it work because if yeah. not, we weren't going to eat, you know, and we paid all of that through teaching and wrestling. Like, that's all I know, like teaching and wrestling. So wow. I wanted to make sure that my kids understood like, yo, the hustle game is definitely strong. Like, you got to definitely, you know, hustle to get where you want. But if you want it, that you, you got to work for it. You'll, so you'll I, I just way, wanted yeah. I want I wanted to lead really good examples for my kids. And I, I have like I said, I've never yelled at my kids. I've never grabbed my kids. Like we have conversations when things go wrong in my house. Like, yeah. I want to know why they did it. Like, why do you think that was a good idea? Like, no, really, I want to understand why. And we'll have great adult, awesome. like in-depth conversations. And I'm talking like my eight-year-old or nine-year-old, like telling me like, damn, dad, you're right. Like he can come to have this like moment where like, oh, wow, I was wrong. And I never see them make the same mistake twice, you know? Yeah. 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 So it's, it's raising uh, these smart babies. Man, they're, and they're so respectful. Anybody that's ever like interacted with my kids backstage or like just in general, they always say, wow, your kids are so respectful. They always say yes or no. They don't mm -hmm. say yeah or nah. Like, especially like for me, like if they, if they're messing up or something and they're like, yeah, I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't understand you. And they're like, yes. I'm like, okay, good. Like, <laughs> talk to me. Let's go. Let's talk. Yeah, let's talk. When did wrestling start to be a thing for you? I mean, if you're going through you know, all of these different things that these hurdles that you've had to go through already as a kid, when did wrestling start to become that bright spot for you as a focus or deciding like, Hey, I want to be doing this. I mean, you mentioned kindergarten. Um, yeah. were, you, were you super obsessed with watching all wrestling at that point? I was obsessed with like Lucha Libre and Puerto Rican wrestling. So like, I would like, again, my grandfather introduced me to Lucha Libre and Mexican wrestling. And to me, that was like sport though. And there was no real story. I mean, there were stories, but like not real, like you, whatever, like you just saw action. Mm -hmm. And then like Renee, 94, my uncle Mike from my stepdad's side brought over this VHS tape and he, he picked, he was picking me up to go to school and he, he was like, you have to watch this before you go. So he pops it in. And I don't know if you remember, but like the VHS tape, if you fast forward it, like while it's in play, you can see the whole thing and yeah. fast forward. Uh -huh. My brain is melting. He's doing that to me. <laughs> my brain is melting. This is the 94 Royal Rumble. And my, I'm like, I'm like, oh my God, what is this? Like, this is the craziest thing. And then he pauses it and he goes, watch this. And it's the Undertaker versus Yoko casket match. Oh my God. And I'm like, what is this? This isn't wrestling. This isn't Lucha Libre to me. This is like, what is this? This is awesome. And he's like, this is WWF, the WWE. Like, this is pro wrestling. And I was like, I was hooked. I was hooked, instantly hooked right there. That's when I knew I was like, nothing else matters in this world. This is what I want to do. <laughs> and then, um, you know, I did the backyard wrestling thing with a lot of guys. I ain't going to call no one out <laughs> what, that is on the main roster uh -huh. um, that we did backyard wrestling. We had, a, yeah. we built the ring. We had mats. The first time I did the shooting star press was off a chair in the backyard. Oh like, my God. Yeah. So then uh, I was... I was 16. It was me and a couple other guys, but I was the youngest. I was 16 and we had a backyard wrestling show. And I remember we had a guy from ECW. His name was Tommy. And I, I'm looking at his name, but I can't remember, but he wrestled in ECW, but he came to our show. Not Tommy. And, Dreamer, uh, somebody else. No, not Tommy Dreamer. <laughs> not Tommy yeah. Dreamer. I'm looking at him and I can't, I can't like say his name off the top of my head, but um, he basically was like, Hey, you six, it was like six of us. You should go to the ECW arena, which I didn't know was accessible, by the way. I didn't know anything about indie wrestling at this point. It was just Especially when ECW. you're like a kid, too. You're like, that. I, I can go there? What? Uh, what? There's, it's yeah. I was like, there's, land? Uh -huh. yeah, I wanted it all. <laughs> so he goes, yeah, that you could go to the ECW wrestling uh, or ECW building. They have a wrestling school in there and go ahead and, and check it out. They actually do shows. And I was like, what are, like, what do you mean? Like WWE comes in there, WWF comes in there. He's like, no, um, you know, um, independent wrestling. So I was like, the hell is this? Now all my friends kind of knew about it, but I was like, again, focus, like, this is the goal. Like go to WWF at that point. And then, so we went to a show and uh, for CZW 
Now, at that point, I don't know. Moxie's from CZW. Like, you know about CZW. Oh, yeah. So it could be kind of crazy at CZW. Uh-huh. But CZW could also be very lit and have some, like, banger matches, Renee. And if I had went to any other show that they were holding besides this one, I probably would not be wrestling. But I went to their show called Best of the Best, and I saw two dudes in there that blew my mind. And it was Ruckus and... Claudio Clastagnoli. Yeah. And I was like, these guys are stars. Like, this is a, like, to me, I was like, forget WWF. Like, this is, this is where I want to go. The uh-huh. wrestling was awesome. They had great personality. And I was like, okay, this, sign me up. This is the wrestling school I want to go to. Like, let's go. Let's do it right now. So we had a great conversation with uh, Claudio, Hero, uh, a bunch of other guys that were in there. And the next week we signed up, me and three dudes. I took my money from my college, uh, my my tuition money. I said, well, I'm going to use this and um, I'm still go to college, but I'm going to use this to pay for my wrestling school. And um, 16, 17 years old, I ran with it. And like I said, I'll be 35 in May. And that's all I know is wrestling and, and, and teaching. That's so crazy. So, I mean, Claudio's got to be what? He's only a couple of years older than you, right? He must have been like, yeah, he's a baby. Yo, he, he just came from like Switzerland, like maybe yeah. two years in. He was still training actually too as yeah. well. But like, you know, Claudio's Claudio. Like he's Claudio's the man. Claudio so a superhero. Yeah. My gosh. <laughs> and I always say like one of the best dudes, I give him credit for help training me as well uh, among some other guys. But, you know, I'm very, very proud to say, yeah, that dude helped train me. Like, and one of the best wrestlers, if not the best wrestler in the world. I said it out there. Yep. Not that my opinion Where, matters, but okay, it does to Just me. to take like a quick little deviation since we're talking about Claudio. What do you think Claudio should do right now? He's not under contract with WWE. Um, what do you think somebody like him? Somebody like, I mean, I'm sure he's getting called up by everybody because he is the absolute best of the best. The best. Um, but for somebody that I feel like has never gotten that huge moment that he so rightfully deserves. What do you think Claudio should do? Here's the thing. He'll go anywhere and become the guy, but there always will be somebody and say, well, he didn't do it in WWE. Right. But at the end of the day, it don't matter. It depends on how he feels and him leaving tells me like, and knowing him tells me that like he's leaving for himself. So no matter what he does, he's going to be happy with me personally. and, And before I say this, any company would benefit from Claudio, 100%. whether it's a, a wrestling role uh, teaching role, anything that you gets it a thousand and ten percent. Yeah. If it was me though, I would love to see Claudio kill it in New Japan or Impact. And the only okay. reason I say that is there's no difference for him in AEW. Right. I feel like not that he would be in the same spot, but I think he don't benefit AEW and AEW don't benefit him at this moment. I get that because I mean, their roster is stacked. Stacked. There's so many people over there that, yeah, I mean, it's like adding another gigantic name. And as much as, you know, everybody knows how awesome Claudio is, but yeah, I think him being able to take a little time, maybe go out, do a little G1, send him, send him to Japan. I mean, like, because you also too got to remember like when he was in Japan, he did a lot of tag stuff with hero. Yeah. So like to go back now and like be solidified as like, yo, I can, I did everything from tags, six man tags, hardcore, mat, all this, but now I'm going to be the singles guy. Watch me. Yeah. And like Push. a Claudio hero, I mean, a Claudio hero run. Like, yeah. Oh my God. I actually, yeah. so he came out to sledgehammer. Um, yeah. was it, <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I almost tweeted. And I was like, will we ever see or hear this again? Because I love that song because <laughs> of so him. Good. I'm telling you, because of that show, he came out to that show with that. And I was like blown away. And I, and I didn't know anything about, oh, I thought that was legit his music. I didn't know anything about Peter Gabriel or anything yeah. like that. Cause all the, all those musics I heard in ECW, I legit thought they were real wrestling themes. I of didn't course, know if you don't about know. ACDC and, and men in the box. Like, have you um, ever seen Harry Styles do his cover of sledgehammer? Cause it's a thing of beauty. Let me, I have not. Is it's it on amazing. YouTube? It is. It's on like the check it out. studio sessions. You must check it out. It's f- awesome. All right. It's we're going to watch it. I'm going to watch it later. 
Um, okay. Anyways, back on track here. So you're in wrestling, you go to ECW, join their promotion or join their training and whatnot there. Um, but the goal was always to get to WWE. So when the opportunity comes up for the cruiserweight, um, classic tournament, what all kind of transpired with that? You got eliminated what second round and then were offered a contract after that. Yeah. So, so I, again, got to thank one of the good brothers, Claudio, for putting my name out there. Uh, I also helped that I was in Florida already. So, yeah. you know, WWE was like, okay, cool. I ain't got to pay Did nothing. Did you move to Florida because of wrestling or you moved down there because of teaching? No, I moved down there because my daughter was going to be born in Florida. And again, I didn't want to be that dad to to not be in her life. And then, like I said, in 2016, when I got a car, finally, she moved back to Jersey and I got stuck here. So I was like, ah, of course. <laughs> but uh, no, so I was I was um, I, I just wrote about this in my book, which I'm writing. And I was oh. 27, 28 and I make gear. And I just like had this epiphany that I was like, man, I did a lot of things like to me that at that time, 30 was like the no, no number. Like people were talking about. So like, right. if you didn't make it by then you weren't making it. And I, you know, I had this like moment where I was like 20 or boil. a little bit. Now I'm like, but I feel, I feel 20. I feel I so much better, like mentally and physically that I did. Like when I was 20, like, do I feel like shit? Yeah, I do. But like, I don't <laughs> you know how to at manage the same time. It. Yeah. 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 So, um, what were we talking about? My bad. I don't know. Um, moving to Florida and getting oh, yeah. there and getting. Situated. So, yeah, I was like 27, 28. And, uh, you know, I was talking to my girl. I said, yo, this number is approaching. And if I don't get signed by WWE, I did Japan. I did impact like spot shows for them. You know, I did Mexico. I did everything I could that maybe that's what life had like given me. And then I just remembered, uh, you know, Claudio giving my name out. I remember hearing rumblings of the Cruiserweight Classic. And I was like, who do I need to email? What shows do I need to be on to get seen? Like yeah. I just started kicking it at overdrive. I, nutrition was up the wall. Like I learned nutrition, learned how to really work out. Like I just wanted to be different. So that way Gotta people were like, many abs. Yeah. <laughs> the low carb. I need my carbs. I need my carbs. <laughs> Me too. Me too. I need my carbs. So, uh, so I think uh, Claudio and Gabe Sapolsky had put in my name, you know, cause I had worked with Gabe before with Evolve and Dragon Gate USA and all these other promotions. And, um, you know, he, he saw me as a good talent and saw me, you know, as an opportunity for maybe for me to sink or swim. And that's all I wanted to do. Like, I just wanted an opportunity. I didn't want to yeah. push or anything. Let me sink or swim on my own. Like, if I fail, at least I fail on my own. And, um, you know, after the first round, after wrestling Ali, which we killed it in five minutes and it, everybody, we had the shortest amount of time too in, in the Cruiserweight Classic first round. And we felt disrespected, but at the same time, we're like, you know what, it. let's, let's show them that we don't need that much time to go out and kill it. Let me show them like what cruiserweight style is like just in and out and then bang it out. And that's what got me my contract that I think that match, how we, how we were able to do, you know, time management, how we were able to put it together because me and Ali, we thought WWE before WWE, like when we put our matches together, yeah, we had some crazy spots, but like it was always about the moment, always about creating that mis you know, that that believing that we were doing was real. Yeah. And um, I remember between right after the first round, they had a meeting and I saw all the good brothers like get called up like, hey, we need this guy, that guy. And you know what they were getting called up for? Like they were getting offered a contract, but you don't hear your name and you're like, yeah. like damn, I, I made it to the second round. I couldn't even get a like hey good job or like a, a contract like you know a contract would be nice yeah. but anyway i was making bailey's gear and uh i remember a 203 number had called me and i've never seen a 203 number in my life and it's a like connecticut uh, and i was like looked at it i was making gear and then my phone vibrated and never vibrates you know, I know when yeah. somebody's going to call me or something so it was just weird that i missed it yeah and i picked up and i said hello and he goes Hi, uh, is this Lindsay? And I go, yeah, who's this? And he goes, it's Darren. Or Dar I think that's that name. I go, who? Regal? And he goes, William Regal. <laughs> and I go, oh, hold on yeah. one second. I said, Mr. Regal, you got to apologize. My brother is a piece of shit. I'm sorry. Uh, how can I help you? And he's like, yeah, uh, basically, we want to offer you a contract. So if anybody's talked to you, please, you know, at least hear us out after the second round. And uh, right, I, 
I said, thank you very much. I played it off very cool. I was uh-huh. like, super cool. I got off that phone. I called everybody and my mother. I said, yo, we're about to go to the Fed. We're about to get signed, baby. Uh-huh. I don't care what they say. We're about to get signed. And uh, then impacted me up. Oh. And I was like, ooh. I was like, let me entertain this. I like this. I like, I like to see the options. Yeah. And they said, hey, we have an idea. Can you come in Tuesday? And this was the same week as the first round of WWE, uh, the Cruiserweight Classic, which was taped on a Thursday. So I'm at Impact on Tuesday. And I wrestled Mandrews as uh, my other character because I didn't um, want to jeopardize anything with Lindsay for I wanted him for the Cruiserweight Classic. Yeah. And Renee, we banged it. We killed it. <laughs> like, I bet. Like people want, and I wasn't even signed to the company and they were like, yo, this, we let's do it. And I remember, um, homie snow and a couple other guys came up to me, offered me a contract and right there on the spot, I was like, no, I, I said, thank you very much for the offer, but I'm going to get signed by WWE. And this is before even having that conversation with WWE. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. So again, I'm manifesting all of this. I'm like, if it, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be like, so we show up to that second round. We wrestled. I wrestled Rich Swan. Love my dude. That I saw him yesterday. That like, I'd do anything for that dude. He was the one that also told me that I was gonna get signed. I was like, Nah, you lying. Shut up. And then um, hear my name get called at the end. And I was teaching at this time, and I was already like seven years in teaching. And in my head, I said, Y'all can offer me one dollar more than my contract for teaching, and I take it. <laughs> yeah. I don't care what it is. I'll take it $1 more, but it's got to be more than my teaching contract, yes. which was way, I mean, it wasn't way more, but like I was making like 35,000 a year as a teacher, like, which, and by the way, is so shocking. Like I cannot believe what teachers get paid. Oh my God. It, it, I would spend more money teaching than I was getting paid. Like it was ridiculous that there was no support. And that's why it made it a lot easier for me to leave teaching, not because of the pay, but because of the support. Yeah. And also I, I would love to teach kids to inspire them. I don't want to teach kids for a test because somebody's going to make money off of them. Like, yeah. you know, let me inspire kids to want to come to school to feel safe or want to learn because they're going to get better because they see education the same way I saw that as an escape, yeah. right. And a portal to everything. Do you, do you teach, were you doing a thing where you were like teaching math on your social media or like doing something like you were doing something like that? I was tutoring kids, like people, like families would like write me live, like, Hey, my kid wants to do this. I would either bring them up in zoom or, uh, I was working with another teacher that I still talk to my boy Concepcion and we would do, he teaches physics now. So like a lot of the wrestling he uses in physics and it's like a great interaction. Oh, wow. Once a year, I'll call his classroom in my mask and we'll talk about the elimination chamber spot because he uses that in his test and all that. So it's kind of yeah. cool. Um, so when you had to make that decision to jump from being a teacher into professional wrestling, um, what were the conversations you were having at home with you and your wife? It was a for sure. One was like, why well, are we getting paid more? Because like yeah. we were struggling, like I said, and yeah. everybody struggles. But like it really was like. We had a two bedroom townhouse living four people in like, you know, it was very hard. So when we had that little bit of boost income, it was like, let's get the necessities set up. So that way we're good. But it was also hard for me professionally because I saw so many teachers leave uh, when I was teaching because Florida is a transitional school for not only students, but teachers. And I would see students have a substitute for like four months, three months. And I was like, damn, they're not learning anything. And I didn't want to be that teacher to just bounce. Yeah. But also, like I said earlier, I didn't feel like I was inspiring kids to like want to be here. I would have great, great rapport with my kids. Like they loved coming to my class because they they didn't come to a math class. They came to, you know, Mr. Cordero's class who was going to be. Yeah, it was math. But like, damn, I'm going to have a good time. I'm going to feel like not like I'm in school. You know, I'm going to entertain them as a teacher. That's that's how I practice entertaining yeah. through teaching, you yeah. know. And, uh, but it was a lot easier for me to leave when I was offered because one, it was my dream, right? It was my dream, always been my dream. So like, if I had an opportunity to do it, even if I was going to fail the next day, just to say that I did it is I'm happy with, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, also because like the teaching wasn't the same that I felt when I was in first grade, just because of like, I I get, I felt like more of as a business than Mm -hmm. inspirational. Yeah. Yeah. 
when you got into WWE and um, your, you know, 205 Live becomes a thing, um, Lucha House Party becomes a thing, you never got any mic time. Do you really wish that that was something that you were able to do to add more layers to your character? I know that that was a thing that had been, uh, you know, a bit of a point of frustration for, I believe, all of you for in Lucha mm -hmm. House Party is like not not really getting that time, not getting these layers to your character. Do you think that um, being able to jump on the mic would have helped a little bit, especially for you? I think every time they did let us on the mic, we killed it. I know toward the end, me and me and Metallic were like, especially with Riddle. I felt like we were killing it. And especially we were given suggestions that they were like, yeah, let's do that. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. And like, yeah, there were little battles that were won, but like the fact that they were like, yeah, that's cool. Let's do that. Like made it seem like, Hey, maybe I know what I'm doing. Let me kind of like, let me do my thing. But honestly, Renee, man, I just felt like I felt the role. I felt like I wasn't meant to do anything else because anything we ever pitched that was cool or different or revolutionary that I always thought was revolutionary just wasn't for us like no yeah. we just don't need that right now or like, like no what? so i wanted us to be i didn't want us to be in gear for any promos i was like let us be like santo and blue demon let us be like a society of luchadors of like you know dignity and and like respect and hard i wanted us to be like hard like a male version of charlie's angels where they could be cool and sexy and badass but still like get shit done and exciting yeah. Yeah. and and interact with each other and uh, the original Lucha House Party idea, like we we wanted our own like mansion, like not mansion, like our own little like hot spot. Um, you know, we had uh, the red carpet, red grate or red uh, ropes. Uh, we had we had a, like a legit set that we wanted that wasn't like cost effective. Like everything that I, I literally walked through the props truck and I was like, all right, you got this. I could do that with that. You got this. Cool. Let me come back in a, two weeks with an idea and be like, look, you ain't got to pay for nothing. Like y'all got it here. Yeah. And it, it just was like, oh, these are great ideas. Just not for you or any Lucha guy right now. We just need Lucha Lucha. And I remember they would give Manny like promos and like no lines for us in the back. Because, you know, he had the he had the equity, which, you know, that's on him. That's not on him. That's on the, the company. Mm -hmm. But they he had the equity. So they gave him the lines and we were just left to do the Lucha Lucha yeah. at the end. Yeah. To the yeah. point where I had to have that conversation with somebody I'm like, hey, like. I'm talking to you just like I would talk online. Like, can we, could you throw in some other lines other than Lucha Lucha? Like there's more presence to that. And even toward the end, when we had promos and they wanted us to bust out Lucha Lucha, I would tell Metallic, like at the end, don't say Lucha Lucha. Like just say yeah to their face and then be like, nah, just don't do it. Like at the end and let them just cut it. And when they ask us like, oh God, are you guys going to say Lucha Lucha? I'm like, no, like we just don't feel like <laughs> we're not like it into it right, right now. now. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, nah. It was just, it was just, it just felt like a role. And that, it, that is WWE. Everything has a role, but mm -hmm. I just was like, Dan, can I have some input in this role at least? Yeah. You know, I'm yeah, realistic. I see like what you're trying to do. To, to give it something, to give it something a little more to keep you entertained, to keep people entertained, like from all aspects, it should be more collaborative. Co or co can we compromise on it? That would be my yeah. biggest word. Like, is there any compromise in here? And like, they would hate that word. Like <sighs> uh, the dudes that I would work with, because like, I put them on the spot. I want to know like, yo, like, are you telling me that this is how it's going to be? Or can we like be creative and be like, make this awesome? Cause I don't want to yeah. put anything half at, like, I don't want to put out something that anybody could just hold a phone up and do. Like, right. I really want to put time and effort into my stuff and make it seem like it's totally different than any other luchador or any other, like, not only luchador, but, you know, that is my goal to be different than every other luchador, which I feel like I have, but also be different than everybody else out there, like yeah. busting out content, talking. Like I ask every promotion, please let me talk. Let yeah. me just cut a promo. I don't care if yeah. you, you use it. Let me just do it. I just want to make sure like, yeah, my voice is heard. I got a voice. I can talk. I know I can. Let me just yeah. do it. How hard was it for you to come to the conclusion of asking for your release? I mean, you talk about the things that you have been through from giving up teaching, moving into professional wrestling. I mean, from your childhood to all these things of not having much and finally having this great paycheck. Was it really difficult for you to decide to, to want to walk away from that? Of course, it's difficult to say, like, I quit. Right. Because that's ultimately what I did. I quit. I said, this is not for me because y'all not fulfilling me creatively. The job was easy, Renee. Yeah. The job is easy to be 
for somebody who loves pro wrestling, the job is easy. Yeah. But somebody who loves pro wrestling, the job is very frustrating because WWE is not a wrestling company. They are a movie company. But somebody who loves pro wrestling and understands that and wants to contribute is frustrating. Right. And I couldn't, and I kept going home and bringing homework or like home back and taking that frustration back on my family and being like so secluded and just not wanting to be around anybody. And even like to the point of my kids, like they know not to watch my matches. They just like, they don't watch my matches. because like, daddy loses. Like, oh, that's so you know, sad. they don't, they don't, they don't like, they're just so numb to yeah. wrestling because of that feeling. Like it, it is frustrating. And I was like, you know what? That. I'm not, I would never ever jeopardize my family's in like integrity and, and mood because I feel like I'm not getting what I deserve or what we deserve. And, you know, metallic was the first one to ask, you know, cause I was like, you know, the handler for a little bit of that. Uh, but then like I had a conversation with him that night and like, we had the conversation too, me and, and homie, uh, you know, the bosses to be about possibly leaving, especially when we had that conversation with metallic. But I said, hey, this this meeting right now is for Metallic. We'll have a, a different conversation separate. But uh, I knew because of that, my family was more important. My happiness was more important. My mental state was more important. And uh, I, I just needed I needed to be happy. Yeah. And not that I wasn't happy there, but creatively, I wasn't happy. Like, I love my friends. I love my the opportunity. I love achieving my goal. But I know, like... Once you achieve that goal, what's the next thing? And that I never asked myself that. But once I found it, it was like no stopping me. Like yeah. I, I'm gonna go. How was that for you to to have those moments of getting back to wrestling and back to being creative and like falling back in love with professional wrestling? I I oh my gosh! I, so I've had four matches already. Let me see one, two, four matches already. And like a couple of signings, the signings I'm not really too f fond of. Like, I feel like that makes me like I'm done wrestling and old. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not there yet. Mm -hmm. uh, but that first match back, I had it with my friend. I actually had it at my college. My college has a, a program, Rowan After Hours, Rowan University, Yale. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they have a program where they try to keep the kids out of trouble. And one of the nights they bring in wrestling. And one of the old wrestling promotions out in New Jersey, I used to wrestle for asked me, Hey, do you mind having your first match back here? And I said, yeah, I would love to, because one, it's going to be with my friend and two, like it's a familiar spot and no, no time limit, no anything. So I could do whatever I want. Yeah, I'll definitely do it. And I'm not going to lie. I was blown up. I was like, <laughs> it was so cold in Jersey. I was like, Cause I hadn't wrestled since September or October, yeah. like three, yeah. four months. Like it was like, and a singles match. I was, I've been Woo. wrestling as a tag match for like four years. Like give me a breather. Please, I, there was four times that probably I was like, please give me a second. Hold on. But <laughs> it was, it was fun to just like let loose. Yeah. Really like not care about like who does this, who does that? Like really just like, what's, what's going to be the style I want people to be like, that's cool. Yeah. Like I want them to talk about my matches all the time. So it was just exhilarating. Like, yeah, like I felt who do, you, who do you want to be now while you're out there wrestling? You said you're four matches in, like what, what are the different things that you're going to be bringing to the table and that, that you want people to take away from your matches? For sure. So like basically also too, I, I want them to know I talk. So like a hundred percent, I either want to start my matches with a promo or leading up to this, the, the match, you're going to hear a promo from me. I'm going to put something out there, yeah. you know, and it's going to look good. So that way people are like, damn, like, okay, then they should have let this guy talk the Get whole it. time. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, uh, you know, I think I'm, I'm legit. And there's not a lot of people who can say like, yo, they legit, but like, I'm legit. I love fighting. I love violence. I love, and it's everything that I was hiding from leaving New Jersey. Right. But like, yeah. that's inside me. That's always inside me. Sure. I love rest, like amateur wrestling. I love jujitsu. I love like the idea of like, in, in a good way and in, in a competition way strangling somebody and like hearing them tap out and i want to bring that idea of like violence to my matches where it's like lucha violence yeah. where people are like that mix of like awesome lucha libre with violence like every time you see lucha libre no offense to any of my friends they're great athletes but it's just like it's lucha libre there's nothing else different from that match to the next match and all that 
But when you see somebody who can come in and like is legit and look legit and can do everything, I could do everything under the sun. I know I can. I'm very smart with it. I'm very selective. But when you can see somebody who I like to call myself the Lex Luger, I'm the total package. Like in the ring, outside the ring, like I will give you everything and everything. Like, you know, 100%. And I love I never the met- idea of that combination of like Lucha Libre with like that violence. If you were to yeah. add like some other like submissions and stuff like that would be so sick. I'll, like I love that's why that's why I started doing jujitsu. Like I have my amateur wrestling background from years. Like I'm talking before middle school. Like I've been wrestling for my whole life. Yeah. But like now throwing in that idea of like, like I say, poetic strangling. Like, you know, I love that stoetic violence where like shaking a guy's hand and he's smiling at you and 10 seconds later he's choking you out like yeah. there's something about that like to me like it turns me on no offense but like <laughs> yeah and, and like to bring that to wrestling like it, it's cool like yeah. i think it's cool it's different and that they're gonna see they're gonna see that more of me and, and i bet you you're gonna see a lot more there's hybrid luchadors but you're gonna start seeing like guys like doing jujitsu doing yeah. like you know lucha jujitsu or something so I think I don't if know. people continue to sort of toe that line between professional wrestling and like the, the reality based MMA style, I think that that's something that you have to see more of in professional wrestling to, to keep people invested and to keep people um, intrigued by what's happening. You no, a hundred percent. And I love UFC. I love MMA. I like, that's all I watch. I watch that more than I watch wrestling. Yeah. Uh, and it's just because of like, you know what you get out of wrestling, but you don't know what you're going to get out of UFC. For sure. Right? Oh my gosh. I've got to have you on my XM show with Misha Tate when we're talking UFC. I'll have to I bring you Misha. on at some point. No, you can't bring me on with Misha. You can't bring me on with Misha. <laughs> but tell her I said hi. Tell her I said hi. I'll no, I would definitely do it. I would definitely do it. I that love. Would be fun. We should like, do that. Yeah, 100%. Let me know. I have a side note. Um, What happened with you and that Izzy kid's dad? I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> Okay. Well, because I truly like, it was one of those things that it's not like I was like closely following anything, but I would see it pop up on like social media. I'm like, what's happening here? I don't like, I know who she is. I remember her from NXT, but beyond that, I don't know what's happening. What happened? Okay. Let me start off by saying this is probably the first time I'm talking about it publicly right? Besides me tweeting about it. Mm-hmm. And this has nothing to do with no female. I don't, I, if I ever have a problem, it's never with a female. Let me talk to the man. I always will talk to the man. Let me show you, I'm showing you respect by doing that. I, I don't ever want to yell at a oh, female. Let me talk to the man. And uh, I also want to say before I go on that this has nothing to do with the wrestlers involved for the incident I'm about to talk about, because I know what it's like to be a wrestler and hustle and make that money no matter what, mm-hmm. not on them. So now I was in WWE. I forget exactly when it happened. I want to say like 18 and his daughter took a choke slam in a ring. And I said, as a parent, no, and a professional wrestling, knowing what it feels like to take a bump. And, you know, as a child, not developed all the way, that's dumb. I would never let my kids like do that. So if you think that's cool, Hey, that's on you. I said, that's you. But my personal opinion, I think is wrong. Well, I guess he got butt hurt about it, but I, you know, I don't care. I don't read, I don't read anything that's not in the verified page. And okay, uh, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't do it. So, you know, me and a couple other guys in this group chat and we find out like I had already asked for my release too, you know? And uh, I remember playing call of duty November 2nd or something or fourth. And I remember there being rumblings, like there's going to be releases. There's going to be releases. So in that I hundred percent, thought I was going to be released. I was like, I'm cool with it. Cause I asked for it. So let's go, let's do it. Got released, stayed off my phone. Right. Cause I, you know, I didn't want to complete disconnect. Yeah. And then uh, the next morning I was going to the gym at five 30 in the morning. And one of my boys had tweeted me or uh, screenshot it. What is his dad said saying, good luck in your future endeavors, smiley face. Like basically, uh, you know, poking, poking me. I said, yeah. okay. So I said, you know what, five, and this was at five 30. I said, seven o'clock in the morning, I'm going to tweet him at him. And I already had a jujitsu tournament that day. So I was, I was in kill mode, Brene. I was already like, I'm going to have four wrestling matches today, or two, four, three in the, in the jujitsu mat and one outside, I bet. So then I said, I want to be the first thing that this dude reads when he wakes up. 
7 a.m. I'm going to tweet them where I'm going to be at. I'm going to tweet them. Hey, let's come have this conversation like men. Show your daughter what a man would do. And let's have this conversation like men. Now, I didn't say that. Show your daughter. You know, I just said very politely, come show up. Let's talk. I didn't say anything about fighting or anything like that. If you want to talk, please say this to my face, but understand there's consequences when you, when you talk. So this dude, I mean, I didn't think anything of it. I didn't honestly did not think anything of it because my brain was like jujitsu tournament. Let's go redemption. Cause I had my, lost my first tournament and I know the guy that I lost to is in this one. So I was like redemption, redemption. And I had that fuel of like, all right, I'm free from WWE. Like I'm gonna just go out there and like, First word out of my mouth is going to be the F bomb, like, because you couldn't do it over there. And like, the next one, I'm, I'm going to just take out this dude. And then, like, I just started my, my phone just blow up. Like, and I was like, what the heck? Like, my phone never blows up. I'm, nobody blows up Lindsay Dorado's tweet because they don't know they got, he's got a Twitter or they don't know he speaks English. So I don't, I'm not going to read what he says. But on this day, they were like, I'm going to read it. And they were like, apparently, this guy was an asshole to a lot of other dudes and females. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I know what it's like to stand up to bullies. I'll be your bully stand. Like I'll be your shield. Like I got you. Mm-hmm. This guy is done, done really being a piece of shit. Uh, not only to me, but to all my friends and to wrestling in general. Like I don't want to go to a show and be like, Oh my God, this asshole is here. No, let's nip it in the butt. Let's talk. Let's just have a conversation. Cause I'm not going to come in in the same room with you and be fake with you. I'm just not doing that. Mm-hmm. So then I knew I show up to the jujitsu tournament. I'm like, I'm just amped at this point. I'm seeing all these little kids go at it. I'm seeing like all these, uh, you know, younger kids go at it. And I just started getting the itch, Renee. I said, you know what, this guy, I'm not going to let him out too easy. I said, no, because then I would be a bitch if I was like, I would be done. I went right back outside. I said, I'm going to need a parking pass, please. 10 bucks. Bam. I said, let me go buy him some tickets. I bought him four tickets. One for him, one for his wife, one for his daughter, and one for the ass whooping I wanted to give him just in case I wanted to give him the ass whooping. I took a picture of it. And I tweeted him. I said, hey, now you got no excuse. Be a man. Show up. You know where I'm at. You got you ain't got to pay for nothing. Let's talk. Let's talk. That's all I want to do. Then this dude messaged me the same apology he put out on Twitter. And I said, no, you got to talk to me in my face. This this bullshit. I don't I don't have words. I don't have words uh, through conversation or text. Come talk to me like a man to my face. And then he wrote hashtag apology. And I was just like. Then he put it out there and deleted a social. And at the end of the day, I was like, you know what? One for the good guys, that bully, we're done with him. And I just never, I never brought it up again because he's not worth it. So, but that's the true honest story from my, my, my uh, point of view. It 100%. It's like, he doesn't deserve the time, does not deserve the attention. Um, I mean, even for us to talk about it here. I mean, yeah, I was curious, like what actually went down there. If he still want to talk, I would, I would be willing to sit down and talk to that fool still. Well, but I know his ass when people like feel like they can say whatever they want. And not only like the fact of like no consequences, but like you're being really shitty to people that do read the things that you're saying. And like that sucks. Like, Especially you, kicking someone when they're down, like, ha ha, good luck in your future. Well, he happens. thought he was kicking me while I was down, but I was really, you know, I was in a good sure. state of mind. But at the end of the day, like people like that in this business where wrestler, I don't care what wrestler you say you are. Every wrestler has some kind of mental thing when it comes to this. Like it really does make them question themselves. Like there's a conf- like everybody who is, I don't care if you're confident. There's, you're always going to question yourself if you're in pro wrestling. And when you see pieces of shit like that constantly to you and other people, like at what point does somebody say, yo, stop that shit or else I'm going to knock you out. And I wasn't saying that I was going to knock him out. Cause I don't want him to be like, Oh, he said he's going to knock me out. No, but I, I just wanted to have words, but it may have ended that way. I'm not going to lie to you. It's just like not like, you know, that's like the example you're setting for your kid who is so into wrestling and she works really hard. And I hope she gets this. I hope I want her to be successful. I want I don't ever want anybody because of some shitty mistake that their parents made. Yeah. Like I want her to be successful. Yeah. It's just I just cannot support the idea of a child taking a bump. And if you don't like that idea and you want to chastise me for years just know that, yo, I'm going to get you, dog. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to smile in your face and I'm going to get you. 
Well, I'm glad that we got to clear that up and have that conversation because I was very curious what happened there. Um, you're a you've what else do you have going on? You're four matches in. When can people see you wrestle next? Yeah, I mean, I, every week I'm booked right now. I, besides uh, this week, I have a signing and one show, which I'm hoping I could perform depending on yeah. how my leg feels. Yeah. Um, you know, I got some stuff coming up. I, I'm going to be focusing on some Mexico stuff. Um, PWX is a big thing that's over here in North Carolina. That's really good that I'm going to be doing their tournament for right now. I just, I really am like just looking at the landscape. I'm being very smart. I have to be smart because of my age and my body, but, uh, I want to do wrestling school. Uh, We talked about that with the other luchas. I got some books coming up. I got a, you know, toy deal with Mass Republic that we're oh, about to awesome. put out because I wanted to put out my first action figure with my first set of gear that yeah. WWE never put out. So I was like, it's important for me to have that. Yeah. But um, wrestling wise, every week I'm doing something so they could check out www.luchalit.com. My schedule's right there every week. I update it. And I'm staying busy, Renee. I got to stay busy. Yeah. You know how it is. Good. No, I know how it is. You got to do that grind. We don't have that TR app to tap into anymore. So you got to. I need it back or something <laughs> like it. Damn I it. Know. That's like the one thing I will say that I'm like, oh my God, I'm so bad at being in charge of my own schedule that I'm, where am I going? What am I doing? Like, it makes my head spin. I'm like, I wish that I had my own personal TR. I had to rebuy a, uh, a, a personal book like a journal or whatever just to keep track because if i wrote everything on the the computer and walk away like that's exactly that but if it's in my book and i wrote it down i'm like okay i have to be at the show at and catch this flight and like super old school now and i feel like damn it like why is this so hard again i know it's so hard i'm my i'm like the worst boss i've ever had no 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 i give myself such shitty hours <laughs> but i bet you love it I, le- I bet you love i mean you have to love what you're doing but like i bet you like truly do enjoy the podcast and like knowing oh, that I once you're it. done you disconnect to your child and it's just yeah. like a whole new world yeah like to me that's what i look forward to like i love doing things like this and i love like doing wrestling stuff but as soon as i'm done yeah. i'm like looking for that first kid like all right. Who 100%. wants it? You know? Yeah, yeah. Who wants it? Who's coming again? Who I wants it? You. But I do like, I mean, I love what I'm doing. I, I love being able to hop on here and like, even just to like catch up to like see my yeah. friends, you know, like it's so nice to be able to just like connect with people. And you know, when you've been in one world for so long and then you're away from everybody, like that's the only thing is like really missing everybody. Um, so it is really nice to be able to hop on here and be like, Hey man, no, this is awesome. Like, this is better than FaceTime, honestly. I know. Like, FaceTime it is. like this. Like, yeah, I know. Yeah, it I'm is. just trying to have a have a good time, a good conversation. I use Zoom a lot with my other daughter too. So yeah. like I've been using this. This is actually, believe it or not, COVID is probably the best thing that happened for me I at least. That, oh, just because it made you have to like slow down and like reconnect in different ways. It helped me reconnect. Like, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Like I, I didn't have a relationship with my daughter until like really recently, like a real good relationship where we can like text and call and zoom whenever we want. But I do need to take that vacation soon though. Dude, book it. I do. Now that like the world is, you know, slowly opening back up and that seems to be a possibility, you owe it to like you and your wife, send the kids somewhere. Oh, I like that idea. I was going to take them with me, but I like that idea just to be like, maybe, but like, you know, take them to like Disneyland or something like you guys go do your own thing. (laughs) I like that. I I honestly did not think about that. Like I honestly thought vacation, bring my kids, but now that's a true vacation, I guess. Just me and my girl sleep in, have a couple extra cocktails, do all that, do all the fun shit. Let's go. I like it. Yeah. (laughs) Well, dude, it's so good to see you. So happy to see you just doing so well. Um, And thanks for, you know, telling your story. You've been through so much. Um, And to Uh, see just like the man that you are and the person that you are um, and that you you wear that stuff all on your sleeve is really cool to see. Well, I really do appreciate you uh, having me on. This was one of the only food podcasts I really wanted to be on. I was, I was like, is she ever going to ask me? I hope she does. Uh, but I'm really glad that you did because you, you just said it. I wanted everybody to know, like, I'm not just a luchador. I am a man. Like, yeah. I really am a grown ass man with grown ass responsibilities and feelings. Like, yeah. yeah, there's more to me than just this mass. So 100%. I appreciate you having me yeah. on. 
I appreciate you coming on. It's really, yeah, it's so nice to just see you and get to catch up with you and, and hear that other side and, and give people another perspective of exactly who you are and the things that you've been through. It's more than the mask, everybody. Damn it. Damn it. All right, we'll go smooch up on those babies. Yes, ma'am. And you too. All right. Tell John I'll miss his ass and uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. All right. Awesome. Thanks, dude.